Welcome to Fantasy Alarmman Around the Horn. I'm Ray Flowers. Slightly hungover from last night, you know, because who doesn't go out on a Thursday night and have a good time? But that doesn't mean I'm not here for you on Friday to give you some in-depth baseball knowledge. Let's start out in New York. Got Giants to talk about. They used to play in New York, by the way. And Mets. Start out with David Wright. Good news with his shoulder. Does not look like he's going to require surgery. He's on a rehab program. Good news there for the 32-year-old third baseman of the Mets. The bad news is he was horribly ineffective last season. Eight home runs, eight steals, a batting average in the 260s. Not at all what is expected from David Wright. Should he rebound? Well, he should. I mean, let's look at this another way. Things were so bad last year. His slugging percentage of 374, lower than his career on base percentage of 377. Again, he's 32 years old. His shoulders should be healed for the 2015 season. What do you expect? Yeah, that's, that's a tough call. He's no longer an elite player. You can't be looking 30-30. Probably shouldn't be looking 20-20 either. I would hope for 15 to 20 home runs. I would hope for 10 to 15 steals. A 285 plus batting average. Still a starting third baseman in the mixed league. Still could be a very good player. and One that might come at a little bit of a discount in 2015. But I don't know if the power is coming back. And with the lack of ability to stay healthy, to stay on the field, and to steal bases last year, his fantasy value is certainly on the wane. Oh, Hiroki Kuroda, another player. Let's go to there, another team in New York before we go to the Giants. Hiroki Kuroda hasn't decided if he wants to play in 2015. Why does that matter? Well, the 40-year-old pitcher could stay with the Yankees. He could return to Japan to pitch. He might just flat-out retire. i got to say this. I am tremendously impressed by consistency. And when it comes from a pitcher in their mid to late 30s, it's even more impressive. Only once in the last five seasons has Hiroki Kuroda had an ERA above 3.45. In the American League, folks, in the AL East. Tremendous work for him. What about the whip? 1.17 whip, only worse than that once in six years. Again, American League, AL East. Tremendous pitcher, tremendous pitcher. Not a big strikeout guy, you know, 6'6, six, 6'7 six, six, strikeouts per nine. Doesn't beat himself with the walks, about two per nine there. Always keeps himself in shape and in the game. If he chooses to return, you should expect another solid season from him. That's all. It, there's no reason to think that that's going away. Still gets the grounders. Still throw strikes. Hiroki Kuroda may or may not play in 2014 in America, or 2015 in America. May not even play in Japan. But if he retires, he'll be going out on top. Oh, a player that hasn't gone out on top for an awful long time now is Tim Lincecum. Uh, relegated to the bullpen in the Giants run to the you know, 2014 World Series Championship. Barely appeared even in the playoffs. A little bit of an injury to his neck, but also just wasn't needed. What are they going to do next year? He's going to go right back into the Giants rotation. He's due $18 million next season. The Giants have Kane. They've got Hudson, they've got Bumgarner, and they've got Lincecum. So Lincecum is a four-starter, you know, not that bad. Uh, the Giants have to decide what to do with their fifth spot. Do they give it to Yusmer Petit? Do they bring back Ryan Vogelson? Do they try to sign Jake Peavy? Uncertainty at the end of the rotation. So because of Lincecum's past, because of the contract, looks like he is a lock for the rotation. Now what does he bring? I mean, his ERA has been like 4-8 the last three years, and it's getting harder and harder to defend my boy, my guy, Tim Lincecum. Um, the fact is he still gets grounders, 1.6 ground ball to fly ball ratio, still very good there. But when he is off, he gets hammered. I mean, you'll even watch starts of his where he'll be sailing along four innings, you know, giving up three hits, no walks. And then in the fifth inning, he'll give up three runs. And then in the sixth inning, he'll come back out, shut him down again. He loses the release point, he loses his control, and because of that, he gets hard, hit hard at times. He's also lost a strikeout. That's the first time we can say that about him. 7.75 strikeouts per nine in, in 2014. Still a solid number, but for a guy who's in the nine fours for his career, very disappointing. Expect more of the same next year for Tim Lincecum. Throw a couple of bucks at him late. Draft him, you know, late in, in, in the you know, 20th round or something like that in the mixed league and hope you get a payoff. Don't expect huge things. I don't know if it's coming back, and that pains me to say. Pablo Sandoval is 28 years old. He wants a big contract. Now, the third base position this year in free agency is is pretty bereft of talent. We had Aramis Ramirez deciding to go back to the Brewers. That leaves Chase Headley and Pablo Sandoval pretty much as the only guys. So they both have a position of power. Headley coming off a couple of down seasons. Sandoval coming off a decent season. Now he played 157 games, which is huge, a huge key for him. Because uh, even though he's 28 years old, he's had all the issues staying healthy, issues with his weight, off uh, stuff off the field, hamate bones in both, ar and, uh, both arms have been broken, wrists, excuse me. Didn't have a great year, you know, 279 average, you know, 16 home run, nothing great. And, you know, four per, you know, per 150 games for his career, we're talking about a 294, 1880 type of hitter. Now, those are very good numbers, don't get me wrong, they're very good numbers. And he does play good defense. 
But given the 28-year-old Sandoval, huge money, which is what he wants over six years, his agent said, look, he's 28, we don't want three or four years, we want six years. Paying this guy $15 million, $17, $18 million for six years, given his weight concerns and the problems he's had in the past staying on the field, that's going to be a very difficult decision for the Giants to make. Someone will probably better the Giants' offer. It'll be up to Sandoval to say whether he wants to take the money or stay where he's not only been successful, but is loved in the Bay Area. And then finally, how about the case of Cole Hamels? Tremendous pitcher. 2-4-6 ERA last year, 1-1-5 whip. That number for his career is 1-1-4. He strikes out guys all over the place. Five of the last six years, 190-plus strikeouts. Six of the last seven years, 190-plus strikeouts. He was injured at the start of last season, but came through at, by the end. Yeah, tremendous year again. 2-4-6 ERA was the best of his career, strikeout and inning, all that stuff. Does he get dealt potentially to the Cubs? Now, you look at the Cubs, they need pitching bad. Their infield is stupendous. No team in baseball has more talent, young talent, in that infield. They've got, you know, three of the top ten prospects in baseball. They've got Anthony Rizzo at first base, but they need pitching. Right now, their staff is what? I mean, it's names like Wada, Hendricks, Edwin Jackson, Travis Wood. This is not good, folks. Now, Jake Gary had a tremendous season last year. What's his follow-up going to be? We'll wait and see. But other than him... Yeah, they need pitching bad, so a, a fit here certainly could be worked out. Maybe some of that young talent going to the Phillies. Phillies an old club that need an infusion of young talent. They've got Franco coming next year, but other than that, they really could use some young players on that squad. We'll have to wait and see. Hamill's one of the best pitchers in baseball. Still is, even though he's in his 30s now. Uh, let's see if the Cubs can make a deal happen there to get something that they desperately need. I'm Ray Flowers. This has been Around the Horn on FantasyAlarm.com. Look for everything we've got to offer there, which is a lot player news, in-depth reporting, we've got rankings, we've got daily fantasy information for football, for basketball, we have it during the baseball season as well. we got everything you could possibly need at FantasyAlarm.com, so don't forget to come visit us. We'll talk to you again soon. Woo.